Uh, let's get more now from South Korea, where funerals for some of the 154 victims killed in a crash on Saturday have begun to take place. Our correspondent Nick Marsh is in Itaewon, the uh, area of Seoul where the tragedy took place. Uh, Nick, have all the victims been identified now? Yeah, the identification process has been completed, uh, sped up somewhat, given the fact that South Korean government issues IDs to all of those uh, 17 years old and above. Uh, so really the identification process, um, unfortunately, was quite straightforward in many cases. Uh, you had about 20, 25 foreigners. That was a little bit more difficult. And unfortunately, there were victims that were under the age of 17 as well. But I just want to tell you a little bit about where I am exactly now, Tim. This is the alleyway uh, in which the vast majority of those young people lost their lives on Saturday night. I'm not sure if you can see around the corner. There's a heavy security presence. There's a lot of media here. We can't go any further than this cordon. Uh, but there's a bit of a slope. And although there's no official reason given by the authorities as to what caused this crush, a lot of eyewitnesses are saying that there were so many people packed in on the slope that as soon as some people at the top fell over, it created a bit of a domino effect. And those people at the bottom, unfortunately, were caught under the weight of the bodies. And that's why we saw so many casualties. This essentially, Tim, is the centre of the investigation now. We've just seen about 10, 15 minutes ago the Prime Minister of South Korea. He made his way through here under the police cordons. He was followed by his entourage as a big press uh, scrum. And he went up there, up the hill, uh, presumably to pay tribute. We also saw detectives, forensic experts as well, who made their way up there. They spent about an hour taking photos, making uh, various notes in their clipboards as well. So this is the centre of the tragedy from Saturday night. And unfortunately, now it's the centre of the investigation. Do we, know, do, do we know why there were so many people uh, in this particular area? 100,000 strikes me as a, as a large number, Nick. It's a large number, but this is a busy, popular area. I mean, a lot of people come here for their Friday nights, Saturday nights out. It's popular with young people, uh, South Koreans and foreigners as well, foreign students and, and, and some uh, foreign workers as well. Uh, the big reason, of course, the big draw was that it was Halloween. It was the Saturday night of Halloween. And crucially, it was the first Saturday night after COVID restrictions had been lifted. So you could go out and not have to wear a mask. Uh, there weren't uh, group number limits, things like that. A lot more free, a lot more uh, fewer restrictions compared to what it was this time last year uh, when far fewer people came out onto the streets. The authorities themselves admit that they weren't expecting so many people to come. This wasn't an event per se. This was just a big congregation of people going from bar to bar, enjoying themselves. And I think one big question that's going to come up in this investigation is the policing aspect. Were there enough police? Um, we've heard that there were the same amount of police, 200, deployed on Saturday night as there were this time a year ago when there were far fewer people coming out. And were, whether there were enough police, but also did those police focus enough on crowd control or were they just there uh, to prevent crime? Uh, these are the questions that the people here gathered are going to want answers to. Nick Marsh and Sol, for now, thank you.